Yeah, just in case. Yeah. All right, I'm straight now. All right. Can you hear us better now? Yeah, that seems a little better. Thank you so much. Yes, okay. Um, so first on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the special meetings. Yeah, I don't have anything about the minutes that I'm worried about. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, great. Um, driving second. Aye. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Oh man, I have to take another step. Great. Okay. Um, so the next is grant updates. Um, I know Mary Fair is going to join me shortly. Um, so she could talk about CPA stuff. Um, Carol and I, um, we joined the MPPF um, instructional Zoom meeting. Um, it seems like a lot, a lot, a lot of work um, to get a tiny bit of money. Um, so I think, you know, I'm really hoping that CPA and or other organizations could support us in this. Um, I don't even know if we would be able to get this um, the MVPF grant. Um, so one thing that I found uh, helpful um, was that the um, most important thing has to be done first. So in order for me to apply for money for when these happen first, which would probably be group replacement, uh, the foundation, those sorts of things. So for example, we, would, we couldn't go for a few of those. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. The deadline is March 17th. Um, I know that Carolyn made a bunch of notes and she was going to talk about this, but she's not here. So the March is deadline to apply, we could apply. Well, the comments line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think we're going to figure that out depending on how the CPA uh, discussion goes and yeah. how this fall thing goes after the survey comes in. Yeah. Why don't we need to sense to send a lot of effort to sign on that? But, but we'll have. March of the deadline, shall fit in. If I recall, uh, one of the requirements, the two requirements that I recall for my meeting, people in this people three years ago. Yeah. One is you have to have a preservation place yeah. for all in the works. Yeah. And that's a whole other issue for how that would happen. And the other thing is, is you have to have some matching money. Which you can use CPA for, but even if you did get CPA, you wouldn't have that money until until uh, May. But I think that'd be okay. Uh, but the, anything we got from PDF, I think, is contingent on a CPA or other matching monies. But I think all of that doesn't have to be decided or worked on until after the week. That's what that's what that's what the January uh, um, when we decide. Or what we decided, the kind of recommendation to make to the select board, and the kind of report on the survey we do, which hopefully will be great. Yeah. Okay. Great. Sounds good. Uh, Mary, join us. Hi, Mary. Hi there. Hi. Nice to meet you. Sort of. I know we communicated via email. Yeah. Um. So Mary, we are um, just talking about grants right now. So um, we would love to know more about how CPA could potentially help us. Okay. Well, I pulled out some facts and figures and I'll be glad to go through them and certainly try to answer any questions. Um, I wanna start by saying I am chair of the CPA committee. Um, I'm one of nine members on the CPA committee. So I'm not gonna try to predict what the CPA's um, feelings would be on this or potential 
outcome would be, but I can go through what's available potentially. Um, and if an application comes before the CPA committee and is recommended by majority vote of the CPA committee, it certainly still needs, to, it isn't official until it's approved at town meeting. Um, so that's, that's, the, um, that's where it becomes a project that can be done. Um, so I wanted to try to put it in perspective, what's potentially available and, and what the limits are. Um, the CPA fund is made up of both what the town um, provides and what the state provides in a match. And our town CPA fund um, is a 3% surcharge on the real estate taxes. And the state match is mostly funded by um, a fee that's paid at the Registry of Deeds. So last year when there was a lot of sales, <laughs> That really helped in refinancing, that helped the balance of the fees. This year where there's hardly any refinancing and not as many sales, that has an effect. The, the state also last year put an extra 10 million into the CPA fund. And this year they've done an extra 20 million from the state surplus. So Hadley's already received its match, 74%, um, which is a good match. Um, however, that 20 million has not been distributed yet. So Hadley has the potential to get another 80,000 if they were to bring it up to 100%. It really helps that we're at the full 3% surcharge. Um, a lot of towns only or cities only get in the 30s for a percentage. But the CPA fund has an available portion and then it has a part that's already been reserved because projects have been approved at town meetings. So we're talking about the available portion. Um, by the annual town meeting in May, I estimate that the total funds available for projects will be 2,053,000. But that's not quite the figure we work from. Um, of the 2,053,000, the CPA committee wants to reserve 500,000 so we don't drain it completely. Um, and 208,000 of it is already in the bucket for the housing set aside. Um, CPA projects are either housing, historic, or a combined open space and recreation. Um, and so that 208,000 can only be used for housing. And then there'll be of the money, there'll be another 50,000 going into each of those set-asides as an estimate, because um, we have to put 10% of what we expect to collect in each of those three buckets, and then the 70% left over can be used for any one of those types of projects. Um, so the maximum that this leaves that we have currently available with those you know, deductions is 1,245,000. Um, and that's for available for new CPA projects, you know, by the annual meeting in 2023. Um, we don't know what else might be um, other applications we might be getting as well. When that's not enough money, um, or if we feel that it's taking too much of the fund, bonding is a possibility. <clears throat> we, I'm certainly not an expert on bonding. We Are have. You? Pardon. Bonding is a possibility or is not? Is, is a possibility. Um, that's under the state bylaw and the town bylaw, the CPA, we can bond um, for additional CPA projects. And Linda Sanderson, our town treasurer, is certainly the expert on bonding. And we would certainly contact her if we had an application we thought would be needed for bonding. Hadley bonded for the first time in the fall. Um, for the Hopkins Fields project. So we worked with Linda. And two other resources we had was, um, Linda works with David Eisenthal, who's at Unibank Financial Advisory Services. And he did a presentation to our CPA committee last September. And just going through the do's and don'ts with bonding and, and also particularly looking at Hadley. And if you're curious, it's on the September 12th, 2022 CPA meeting, which is on the Hadley YouTube channel. And he spoke from... Okay. Yep. So that was on September 12th, 2022. 22. Yeah. That's when he spoke to you and that's on YouTube. Yes, and he, 
he spoke about 8.30, 8.30 to 9. So you don't have to listen to the whole meeting if you don't want to. <laughs> and, um, and then also um, the Massachusetts Community Preservation Coalition, which we're a member of, did a boot camp bonding webinar in the fall of 2021. And I participated in that. And that was, uh, that was a full hour um, and then an hour of questions. And that's on their website. You can still watch the webinar. It's on communitypreservation.org. So that's some more information if you want to dig a little deeper. Um, but what the options are is um, when usually when a CPA project is before town meeting, it needs to pass by a 50% majority. And when there's a bond involved, it has to pass by a two thirds majority. So for a project to go forward that wants to be bonded, it needs a higher percentage, the two thirds um, to be approved. And um, it does not need a ballot vote after that. These, if a, a CPA bond does not affect the tax rate for taxpayers. So if it's approved at town meeting, it's a go. There's no follow-up vote required. And the amount that we... Yeah. Uh, so you said that even if you bond, uh, it does not affect the tax rate? Correct. Correct. Because revenue is from CPA. Exactly. Um, so it is the most that we can bond has to do with how much we put in on the town basis every year um, for the PNI. So for the um, the CPA fund. So this past year, Hadley residents through the real estate tax surcharge, um, we had a three hundred and four thousand dollars put into the CPA fund. The state doesn't let you consider how much the state matches because that's not guaranteed. But the we can certainly project pretty accurately, at least in the near future, what the state surcharge will be, and it most likely will only go up um, as you know as the three percent as the real estate tax goes up over the years. Um, so we have that three hundred thousand. But we still can't, for a particular project, use all of that in our calculation because 10% of that has to go into each of the buckets. So 10% has to go into housing, 10% into historic, and 10% into open space recreation. So at the most, we can use 80% of it because what if for this thing we for this project we could you know have it against the historic bucket, but there still would be 10% put in the other two. So about 240,000 um, is the most that we could look at for principal and interest, and that's the maximum. But even that isn't the full amount because we're gonna have the Hopkins bond um, has to be paid as well. So I did some work um, just looking at there, what affects how much the bond payment is, is the interest rate and the term, how many years. Um, so, David Eisenthal had said he thought, you know, in a year, this was in September, the rates for the town to bond might be four and a quarter to four and a half percent. What, you know, interest rates have continued to rise. How much Hadley's rate would be in a year when this would take place um, is hard to say, but I use that. Um, and then the other thing is how many years. So just to give you a ballpark, and again, these are, you know, have to be estimates because um, we don't know the interest rate and we don't know the exact amount of um, some of these other things. But 10 years, the maximum that could be um, bonded in addition to what we've already committed to for Hopkins is a million dollars. And there is a cost to that. Um, it'd be an additional 229,000 we would pay in those 10 years for interest. For 15 years, um, it would be about a million eight hundred thousand that we could borrow maximum, and again, the total interest cost to that would be six hundred and seventy nine thousand. If we even looked at twenty year, um, 
which we didn't do for Hopkins. We just looked at 10 and 15. But if we even looked at 20 year, we could borrow up to 2,400,000. Total interest cost would be another 1,244,000. But again, those are those are the maximums. That's the absolute outside range um, that could be. And just to um, you know, even if we were to do the maximum, we would still have the state match coming in every year. So far, our second biggest year has already been this year, and it may even go higher at two hundred twenty-four thousand. Last year it was a hundred percent. We got two hundred eighty-nine thousand. Um, one year was a low of 36%. On average, the state match for the last 17 years has been 64%. So we, you know, we still have funds coming in, but again, we, we don't know how much. Um, just to put this in perspective a little bit in terms of the dollars, in the 17 years we've been involved in the CPA, we voted on it in 2004, the town is had a total of 6,632,000 put into the CPA fund. The town has provided 4,445,000 of that, the state 2,587,000 of that. So it's, you know, there we can't suddenly do millions of dollars of projects. We just, this that's not the size of this fund. Um, but it's certainly been a great use for the town and continues to be. So in summary, um, the maximum available right now from the CPA fund, well, estimated for um, the 2023 annual town meeting is the million two hundred and forty five thousand. And then the maximum from bonding for 10 years is a million, 15 years is a million eight and 20 years is two million four. How comfortable the committee, the CPA committee, or the town would be getting close to those maximums is certainly unknown. Um, and also, I know you know, but just a reminder that CPA applications are due by February 1st um, for the annual town meeting. And we'll be having CPA meetings at 7 p.m. on February 13th and February 27th. Any questions or is that the information, did that cover the information you were looking for? Yeah, I think we did above and beyond um, what I expected. So that's really, really helpful. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think, it's, I think that's, that's a, a good, good, solid picture of how this works yeah. and what kinds of money potentially it might be available. Um, uh, one question I have is, and I want to make sure I'm clear on this, is if, you know, if, if a bond, another bond uh, was approved, uh, that one that could be, let's say for 10 years, would be $1 million. Now that does not include the Hopkins. It's over and above the Hopkins. Over uh, and above. I already subtracted how much the Hopkins would be before I did the calculation. And does it also not include any potential uh, funding from the regular non-bonded available fund. So the million two hundred forty-five thousand of available um, is separate. So you know if that's not enough money and more needs to be bonded, you know another million if we did the ten-year could be added to that million two hundred forty-five thousand maximum. So potentially. I'm just throwing this out just to give you an idea. So potentially you could well, you could get a food for um, you know, five hundred thousand for the regular CPA in a given year, and another five hundred thousand for over a ten-year period bonding to make a million dollars. If you wanted to slice and dice, you could do it that one, right? We could. Um, with the Hopkins, we didn't take as much. We didn't take all of it that we could have out of the available funds, we chose to do 750,000 bonded. Um, David Eisenthal had said, you probably don't want to bond for less than a million, but Linda pointed out that she combines this with other bonds, that the school committee is doing a bond or if the DPW is doing a bond, she combines them all into one package to reduce fees. CPA certainly still pays just their portion of it. Um, so we aren't tied to that million um, minimum as much. Um, 
And that's, I think, a comfort level. That's something that the CPA committee decides what they're comfortable with. Um, so, so the optics project, did they get, or you get, or did you get approval for something out of the open space? It was about, yeah, it was about half and half, a little over 750,000 um, out of the available funds and then 750,000 bonded. We didn't want to end up with so little that other projects we'd have, you know, we don't want to bond for 60,000 and right, be right down to the bottom. Um, Okay, that, that, that's very, very helpful. Appreciate it. Very, very succinct, too, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're very welcome. And, you know, other if you have other questions down the road, too, and, um, you know, and we'll be glad to work with you with the application if you want to get to that point as well. Well, I remain interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gary. All right, is that anything else for me or I'll I'll sign off? That's it. Okay. Thank you. This was great. Thank you, Mary. You're very welcome. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay, so the survey update. Um, so Allison entered the uh, paper copies of the surveys that Ellen passed along. Um, so we're up to 550 people or five. These surveys. Um, I do have a slight concern that may skew the results, which is um, over, like, I would say every two ish days, um, we get one response, and it seems to be all negative. So I'm also I'm wondering if it has to be something that is going in and saying the same thing. I don't know what that's anything that we can. Yeah. I think we talked about this earlier on. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, I'd like to mention it to Allison anyway, just so she knows. But, um, but that is, I, if that's the case, it's certainly skewing our results because then we don't pull it the yeah. strongest point. You could ask Allison to give us a breakdown of the survey results up to a certain date. Uh, you know, when up to the uh, first, because most of them came in before that anyway. Yeah. Okay. And then you know, look at well, what, the ones that came in at the single first, were they all the same? Yeah. Uh, Bond and so forth. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the comments that were written to you were written in a very similar way. Uh, so. so. If it goes wrongly about it, that's fine. Yeah. Um, um yeah. So um so uh, Allison, we're gonna wait till September 5th when we end the official end of the survey is and then she'll give us a, a final report of what the survey shows various breakdowns by categories and and also um a breakdown I guess she has a didn't want to break it out by resident or not my feeling we should ask for that breakdown. Yeah, you should ask for as many breakdowns as you can get. Yeah. Um, are there any other specific questions that, or, you know, groupings that, that we should ask for to do? Dragon, do you have any ideas of maybe groupings that we want to pull out for the survey? Yeah. Sorry, it was hard to hear over the commotion here. <laughs> Do you want me to say it again? Yeah, that'd be great. So we're trying to figure out what groupings of uh, survey results that we should ask for for um, for Allison. So right now, all we have is you know people who don't work, uh, reside, or pass through the area. We can separate those out. Um, is there any other grouping that you think that makes sense. Other than, you know, the total, the, the total results. Not, not really for me, because um, yeah. certainly I, I think at town meetings, select board, whatever other body is, they're really going to want to know are the people responding that were 
questioning or, or calculating into our results or, or factoring in are going to be, do they live here, right? And are they paying taxes? So I think that's really the primary sorting. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Um, I can't think of any other questions. Do you have any? Okay. Oh, yeah, I'd be only going to ask Allison. I think I'm actually using nine for January. This the survey ends on the 5th. So sometime between the 5th and the 9th, if she can get, you know, send around what the results are. So we can have it before the meeting. Yes. Um, yeah, she's, a, she's aware of the deadline and the Okay. Um, she's not able to join that meeting, um, but she'll yeah, she'll have, she'll have the time available to to get that. So yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Any new business? Okay. Um, Alan and I chatted a little bit before the meeting. Um, we might need to. Uh, just change the location of the next meeting. I think I'll keep folks in loop on that. Um, does it make sense to book the next one or just sort of keep it for now? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have we have booked here. Yes, I, I mean, um, so we have the January 9th meeting scheduled. Do we want to book out another one? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or should we just get people help us? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that some, sometime in January, hopefully before February 14th, yeah. if there's any chance of folks submitting an opinion to CPA, we have to try by the point of February 14th. True. Before that, we have to go back to the select board and tell them, you know, the of the survey and the recommendations and what they need to do. So we have to do that on the 9th, the meeting that we should really pull that together. Um, so maybe we should schedule another meeting sometime between the 9th and February 1st. Okay. So, yeah, so the following Monday is Martin Luther King Day, and the following, uh, the following Monday is the 23rd. Yeah. Friday the 23rd, if that works for folks. Let me just double check my calendar. I'm trying to open it. Do, 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 do. Yeah. What date did you say again, just to validate? Monday, January 23rd. Third. Yep, that works for me. So, is it okay? Uh, yeah, 6.30 is fine for me. Most people. We're trying to do it earlier. Yeah. Dra uh, Dragon, we're, we're wondering if we change the time on January 9th. I don't know if it would be any easier or more difficult if we started at 5 or 5.30? 5.30 would probably be the earliest, yeah. but I could do 5.30. 5.30, then we can do here because this is a place over. Right, okay. Yeah, maybe we should do it. Yeah, maybe we should do it. Yeah, maybe we should do it. Okay. So, stay tuned. Um, Check with Dan. Yeah. Okay. That's all we got. We're so efficient. <laughs> What's that, sir? <laughs> that's, a, that's a tight meeting. I like it, Courtney. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Alan, I like your hat. You're staying warm. Second. Okay, all in favor, aye. Thanks, Alan.